What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we're talking about Sea of Thieves. On July 20th, they released the Return to Monkey Island crossover that was shown at the Xbox Showcase. And with its release, there were some mixed reviews. Does this expansion capture the magic of Monkey Island? Was it overhyped? I'll give you the good and the bad and tell you whether or not you should jump back into Sea of Thieves for this expansion. Let's start off with the good. For those of you who don't know, Monkey Island was released back in the 1990s, mainly on PC, but eventually getting its release on multiple different plats, including PlayStation Network, Xbox Arcade, and even creating into an iPhone app back in 2009. Following Guybush Threepwood, which is basically covering a story of his legendary pirate status, where he wants to become basically like the Lord of Pirates, similar to Luffy from One Piece. They've had roughly around six different installments of the series with a lot of different stories and additions added on basically throughout the late 90s into the 2000s. This recent Sea of Thieves expansion was basically taking place after roughly the third installment and actually continues the story where Guybrush is going to be the governor of Melee Island. Guybrush himself thinks that everything's all right, and he clearly is having a lot of mental issues right now because he thinks that basically his wife's there along with him, but she's actually missing. But Chuck, who is the same enemy from the original series, is back again, and he wants to use this fiery sword to take over the Sea of Thieves. And I think the good part about this expansion has to do a lot with the art style, where they kind of mirror the old games pretty closely, include a lot of the same characters, a lot of the same locations, and it feels as if it's just the up the version of some of those classic Monkey Island games back in the 90s. Going back to the Scum Bar, going back into really just Melee Island's Town Square are nearly identical to the old game that we grew up just playing. You can definitely recognize all the different locations if you play the original titles back in the day. And I gotta applaud Rare for really following how closely tied that they were to the original IP. And I gotta say the writing was pretty funny. They're, you're doing some pretty outrageous stuff from this expansion. For example, getting pirates drunk to steal their money and keys, deep diving for loot, watching skeletons get destroyed in order for them to basically impersonate guards for you to get into the mansion. He these always usually has pretty funny writing, but I was honestly kind of laughing at some of the different aspects that were happening here just because they were so outrageous. So this doesn't really surprise me when Rare kind of takes this IP and brings it to the Sea of Thieves itself. And I just overall enjoyed the dumb task you had to do and just the funny interactions that they had. But with the good, we have to talk about the bad. I think firstly that this took roughly around two hours. And when you get an expansion of this kind that was talked about, discussed in an Xbox showcase, this should not be this short, especially as an intro. I thought for people who have never played the Monkey Island games before, to, for you to basically have a two hour really rough start, it's hard to get people excited to keep jumping into part two. Like if I was sitting here, someone brand new to the series and saying, oh, I'm really excited to play Monkey, Return to Monkey Island. Why the hell would I want to jump into part two after playing this first section? It's very brief and it didn't really give you much at all to go with. Apparently there's supposed to be roughly around 40 hours of gameplay for this ent entirely new expansion. But if that's the case, then you only gave us 5% of that in this first part. I legit was shocked when I jumped into this and we completed all the tasks and we were done. I was just sitting there like, what, what the hell am I supposed to do now? Your overall part one was basically boring. Basically, all you're doing at this part was talking to a lot of people. You're gathering money, you're cooking, you're fixing a clock tower. And if I want to do these things, then I would have just played Animal Crossing. This is a pirate game. Where is the treasure hunt? Where's the fighting? And there's not a single scene in this entire expansion that actually follows any of these criteria. I mean, the Sea of Thieves, you do this constantly and there's not a single time in this first part where I just do the basic mechanics of the game. And I think the worst part about it is that since this is a very limited amount of gameplay that you're having, there's not really any sort of expansions or additions made in just the first section. Now granted, I know that there's supposed to be two parts two and three added in, in the next month and the following month after that, but overall in this first section, there are no new side missions. There are some cosmetics that are added. It's just bare bones. There should be expansions, whether it's the first part, second or third, because at the end of the day, you want to get people excited to jump into this expansion and there's no reason for them to jump back into it. When I, going into this game, I was expecting that there would be some missions for us to explore Melee Island, or maybe do some treasure hunting missions for the pirate lords, like something. We have a whole new money system with the pieces of eight, but literally no way to earn them. Imagine we had to do some side missions to get ourselves into the mansion, like just to get 
the pieces of aid to buy a uniform or to get access to certain tools. We had to do side missions just to get there. Like, what if we had to prove to the different pirate lords, just like Guybrush did in the original games, that we are a deserving pirate to even meet him? Like, you would do a lot of great concepts or mechanics to mirror the original games that actually those fans would have loved to do here. And how about the fact is, like, you have this entire island that they restrict you from really investigating or or just in just looking around and they don't even let you go through certain areas it just feels like a missed opportunity i, I feel like i why would i want to wait another month just to go do these basic things so overall when i'm thinking about this part one of the return to monkey island i think they did some good and a lot of bad firstly the, the fact that they mirror the classic games was very impressive they had a lot of fun with its writing the art style I had some last playing, but overall, it was very limited. Only two hours of duration in an apparently 40 hour long total expansion that they're promising. Why the hell would you make this so boring right off the gate so that you don't really feel enticed to jump back in later on. No side missions, no new cosmetics, no new aspects that make you feel like this is a good thing to at least try out. I feel like Melee Island had, had a really cool aesthetic to it and really felt fun to explore, but they only gave you limited access to it. Me personally, I feel like you could wait until the next month to start this expansion, mainly because if you get new side missions, story missions, or anything along those lines, you can get this intro done in two hours and still have a lot more fun afterward. I gotta tell you, it was pretty much disappointing when just playing this for two hours and not really doing anything that really felt different than what I would be playing in Animal Crossing or any other basic Sims game. But what do you think about Sea of Thieves Return to Monkey Island? Were you impressed? Were you not? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>